I'm Stephanie Strickland with GeekWire Studios here at AWS reInvent 2024. We have been talking all things about cloud computing, about generative AI, about serverless applications, and one of the, the businesses that we are most excited to speak with is Capital One. I'd like to introduce you right now to Kajal Wood, the Senior Director of Data Storage and Consumption with Capital One. Thank you so much for making the time. Thank you for having me, Stephanie. Tell me a little bit about what your job entails. Yeah, so I basically at Capital One lead and manage engineering, data engineering teams that are responsible for data storage and consumption platforms for all of the company's lines of business. So just data is interesting because it makes or breaks what you can do on the AI space. So what is the secret? How do we help better uh, unlock the potential of data and AI in this space? So, you know, honestly, like the AI revolution has really raised the stakes for data, both in terms of companies to make sure they are well managed, as well as they are able to produce and scale to this volume of data. And so I feel like there are like a few key challenges in this space. I probably want to start with like data quality. Most importantly, making sure that accurate data is available because any type of missing or inaccurate or incomplete data can essentially lead to unpredictable AI results. And you really don't want to be driving business outcomes through those unpredictable AI results or insights. The other area that uh, we really want companies to focus on is data accessibility through a lot of legacy acquisitions and through companies on evolution strategy, it's very possible that there is silo data that's available. This data is fragmented across several different systems. And so once you have fragmented data across different systems, it's really difficult to like fully paint a picture of a well-integrated system. And when you can't paint a picture of a well-integrated system, you can't really have AI applications that can scale with the right amount of data. So making sure data is accessible and fully available is I think another key hurdle. The third is underutilized data. So there's exponential growth in terms of volume of data. And so companies that are not ready from an infrastructure perspective to really push the boundaries for storage, for scale, for analysis, for processing, are going to have a hard time being able to tap into all of the data that's available and the potential it can unleash for AI. So I'd say like really focus on these three key hurdles of data quality, data accessibility, and underutilized data. So you have talked about accessing it, uh, unsiloing it, being able to synthesize it, but really what we're talking about are ways to produce and consume excellent data, these building of these excellent ecosystems. What are the principles that you might apply, um, You know, three or four principles that you could suggest to folks while they're chasing this, what sounds like an elusive goal, but maybe isn't if you take small bite-sized chunks of it at Such a Such a great question. So through our evolution and our move to cloud, we've in, and we completed this journey in 2020. So as part of this journey, we came upon like three key principles that have allowed us to achieve an excellent data ecosystem. The first being self-service. So we want our users and we want to give them the ability to do their jobs really well and easily with minimal friction. And so we focused a lot on like building self-service capabilities. For example, data discovery, being able to log in and find data that is usable, uh, enabling our data producers easy and quick onboarding so they do not have to think about all of the well-managed aspects. Those are baked in as part of the self-service onboarding itself. And then from a data consumption perspective, like making this data easily accessible and making sure that the tools that our users have, they are able to work, the tools are able to work on the top of this data. So like these are some key areas from a self-service perspective. Second one is automation. For automation, we want to make sure we shift left some key well-managed capabilities from a data perspective and we bake them in from the get-go. So again, our producers do not have to worry about identifying key data quality checks, etc. They are part of all of our SDK from the very beginning. So for example, like enforcement of governance through emission of lineage, data quality checks, schema checks from the get-go is going to allow for automation. 
And then lastly, I would say scale. With all of this large volume of data, it's important to have the right lens from a scale perspective. So again, enforcing some of the scalability key areas that people tend to not always focus on and making sure that we are able to get this volume of data and the variety and the velocity of the data all through key platform constraints such as like making sure cost, these platforms are built for cost efficiency, they are built for performance because scale is ultimately what is going to help really bring it all together and also making sure that we have the right SLAs to meet data availability because these are critical business functions and you want to make sure your data is highly available. So that's part of the scale story. It is interesting, I love, I love how you refer to that as the scale story. When I think about the story of Capital One, an uh, institution that is mammoth in size, uh, that really has focused on technological advancements at its forefront in its development, but also some lessons learned along the way. I feel like in the space, there's a lot of companies, and CTOs in particular, who might feel a lot of pressure to, they're not allowed to fail. They must be right in the forefront of adopting AI and good data, and being able to charge ahead, uh, but in some cases there are lessons learned. Can you offer any advice to people out there who maybe watch this interview, uh, thinking to themselves how they start to address these three principles and move yeah, ahead? Yeah, sure, so we've, again, like I said, we've gone through our cloud journey and completed this journey in 2020 and built our data ecosystem and through this, we've learned some key lessons, and I'd say like probably four key takeaways uh, from our lessons. First one is streamlined experiences. So we want to make sure that our producers of data are able to easily produce this data, onboard their data sets, and consumers are able to easily consume this data from any point in time. But this requires us to make deliberate investments and be obsessive about these streamlined experiences just like we would for any other customer experiences at Capital One. The second one is enforcement through automation. Again, I mentioned earlier, making sure we have put the guardrails in place from the very beginning when the data comes into the system and like tackling all of those well-managed aspects from the get-go, applying the right type of retention policies, the storage, archival policies, all of that from the very beginning. The third thing would be like really focus on rapid experimentation because we want our users to be able to move really quickly to be able to prototype, ideate, and get results and drive the speed to market in a safe, controlled, regulated manner. Uh, so that's another, and a lot, a lot of the regulated industries are going to focus a lot on the right balance between rapid experimentation and doing it safely. Uh, and the fourth is unwavering trust. Like while we want our producers to produce the data that's available in the ecosystem, we also want our consumers to not worry about like data cleansing, preparation, all of that, and free them from all of that and really focus on driving key business outcomes. And that's only possible when you have data that is easy to use, easy to capture, easy to find, and easy to govern. Bye. To be both thoughtful and nimble in the space is the name of the game. Kajal Wood, thank you so much for being here with us today. This has been enlightening to say the least. I'm Steph Strickland, you're watching GeekWire Studios.